Hello, welcome to this lesson in the Chemistry Tutor. Here we're going to talk about something called the Combined Gas Law. I get really excited when I can teach lessons like this because I finally get to kind of bring it all together. You know, we've, we've covered a lot so far, and if you've never studied chemistry before, uh, it's a lot to take in, believe me. But you've learned quite a bit. You've learned about Boyle's Law, you've learned about Charles's Law, and you've learned about Avogadro's Law. And if I just were to teach those as separate things, you might think, man, chemistry has a lot of different laws, a lot of different things to remember. And that is kind of true. But I told you from the beginning that don't lose sight of the fact that eventually it would all come together, in, come together into one sort of grandfather law or granddaddy law that really governs all of that stuff. So, you know, the way you normally teach chemistry is you teach these little laws because they really help you understand how does the pressure change when I change the volume? How does this change when I change the temperature? You kind of look at how these little uh, interdependencies are uh, by zooming in. Now we're going to zoom out a little bit and we're going to see how all of it relates together. And now that you've learned all of these other laws, the combined gas law is not going to be intimidating at all. It's going to be very friendly because you already know it already. So to get started, I'm going to remind you, so I'll say recall. I like that word, recall. It's something that you should have already known uh, from what we've just talked about. So we have this uh, relation. We said, hey, the volume of a gas is basically going to be equal to some constant times uh, 1 over the pressure. And we call that Boyle's Law. Okay. Remember that guy? And we didn't really ever find this constant. It wasn't really necessary, but this was one way of writing Boyle's Law. And you can go back to the Boyle's Law lecture to see how we got there. Basically, it means volume and pressure are inversely related to one another. When we increase pressure, volume goes down, and when we uh, decrease pressure, volume goes up. So they kind of go opposite one another. You can think of that piston. Pushing on something, increasing the pressure, the volume must be going down. Okay. So that's one of the gas laws we learned about. And I'll switch colors to a different guy. Here, we learned a, a different gas law, so I'll kind of put a little line here. Uh, v is equal to some constant B times T. And we call this one Charles's Law. And again, we never really found what the constant B was because it wasn't necessary. We reformulated this into a before and after going from state one to state two, and we found a very a uh, useful form of the equation in that form, but still, the, the general form of it is the volume and the temperature are directly related to one another uh, by a constant of proportionality here. So if we increase the temperature, the volume must go up, assuming everything else is constant, and if we decrease the temperature, the volume of whatever it is we're studying is going to contract or go down, assuming everything else is, again, held constant. And then finally, we learned about something called Avogadro's Law just a minute ago. And we used a different constant, C times N. N was the number of moles. And we called this Avogadro's Law. And what this one meant uh, was that if we hold everything else constant, the pressure and the temperature, if I increase the number of moles of the gas, the volume has got to increase because you're putting more gas in there. And if I decrease the number of moles of gas, the volume is going to decrease because you know, uh, I'm taking, taking some gas out. So these are the three kind of laws that were discovered in various points of history, and that's why they have different names associated with them. So people studied uh, various interactions between volume and pressure and came with this, and some people uh, studied the relationship between volume and temperature and came up with this, and Avogadro studied this relation between number of moles and volume and came up with all that stuff that we studied there. But it turns out that all of these can be uh, combined together into a more general equation. We, I call it a granddaddy equation. But really what we're calling it, what we should be calling it, is the combined gas law. And it's called that because we're combining all